Yeah, I know you're probably asking at this point, but I heard that this doesn't have body image stabilization. Yes, I was at first, I had my knee jerk response. I said, what the? And you could fill in the, the blank at that point, what I said. But first of all, when they didn't incorporate it and was announced in a press release, uh, Panasonic stated that with image stabilization in the body, it actually affects or hinders the best performance in low light at the higher ISO settings, that there is some heating issues, which we know overheating issues creates visible noise in your videos or your still photographs. And that was something that they could not compromise because since this camera was designed strictly for low light performance, they said, let's not cut corners. And in this case, we'll just don't offer it, just optimize it for that purpose. But remember, if you needed image stabilization, this is the camera that has it. So if you really needed it, great. But I always say to people too, there is pros and cons of having that image stabilization. Now, Personally, my personal belief, image stabilization is one of those things that you kind of go, okay, yeah, image stabilization in the lens and the body, I won't argue, I'm not gonna say which is better, not the point, but image stabilization, people, unfortunately, the, I should say, the manufacturers really promote the fact that image stabilization allows you to hand hold it and take pictures in variety of conditions, but there is more of a real world situation. Yes, what the image stabilization is actually for, for, first of all, it was incorporated for still photography in the beginning in the lenses typically, and sometimes a camera body, but it's that little tiny shaking. Like I'm talking a little tiny shaking because of we've drank too much coffee in the day, in the morning, or we ran up a staircase and we wanted to take a picture or a video of something right away. That little tiny shaking is what it's really designed for. It's not designed for like, this is a common thing that we've been uh, asked by clients oh, I'm going to be on a boat on vacation somewhere. I need something with image stabilization because they actually thought that on a rocking boat, that's what you need image stabilizations for. And that's wrong. Um, my other favorite example would be that if you're taking pictures of sports, now at image stabilization, I'm now able to, in some cases, go down to as five stop uh, slower than what you would normally be able to hand hold it at. For instance, if you're using a 100 millimeter lens, uh, 125th of a second is something where you can hand hold it as a reference. So going down up to five stops slower than 125th of a second is let's say 100, uh, maybe 30th of a second or 115th of a second. Now imagine trying to take a picture of a wildlife or a sports event, let's say the Olympics. The idea at 115th of a second, me waving at you will be a blur. So again, where is image stabilization needed then? Where image stabilization really shines in this case is when you're indoors, low light, and you're taking pictures or videoing something that isn't moving, is fairly stationary, like architecture. L landscape, that's a different story. Yes, mountains don't move, but when you have trees blowing in the wind, you're gonna see blurred movements at too slow of a shutter speed. So again, where does image stabilization is taken advantage of? Now, getting just as a moment about image stabilization, this camera, of course, has the hybrid second generation image stabilization. They state that you can walk down the street and video record and it will look like you were using one of those active Steadicam devices, which is fantastic. They've proven it. I've seen videos online. It's really amazing. But again, little technique aspects that I will pick off and any uh, 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 experienced cinematographer will tell you that if with this camera or a camera with image stabilization, yes, typically you're going to be hand holding this, doing a video of somebody, but let's say you're panning and you want to follow something, you're going to be doing this or this, but the problem is now you're arcing. How many of you, when you're doing a pan, if you're using the image stabilization, you're trying to act as if it was a steady cam shot or a video, a, a tripod video shot, are you doing this? I doubt many of you do this type of movement, which is technically the right way of doing it. If you're on a tripod, that's how it would be done. 
If you're on a steady cam, uh, the active steady cams, again, the steady cam will hold the camera steady and you could then rotate it and it'll rotate on this pivoting point. That is technically the proper way because if you do this, it's arcing and that arc will add to a distorted movement when you're following somebody or, a, or an interior. So why am I telling you all this? Because again, this camera doesn't have a body image stabilization because they felt that anybody doing any serious low light work will not be doing handheld as much that you're gonna be using the traditional tripod or active steady cam or passive steady cam. And by the way, a tripod should never be forgotten because the whole point of a tripod not only is to steady it, that the steady of the shot, but to hold the weight. Now this isn't heavy, but if you're doing a, like right now, this YouTube video, this video that's taking a while, holding this for a period of time is gonna to be torturous. And if you're trying to video yourself, like what I'm doing right now, having a camera and trying to hold it in front of me while I'm trying to do this, doesn't make any sense in the world. That's where tripod still is valuable as what we're talking about here. So after all said and done, an incredible camera for video purposes. But as I was saying before, still is still a strong candidate if you're shooting in the most lowest of low light, if you were doing surveillance photos, if you're doing street photography, and the main goal is to take incredible, beautiful, noise-free images, or virtually noise-free images in the lowest of low light, where you're able to capture these most like unique uh, moments in a door jam uh, or in a back alleyway at nighttime without any existing lights, that is what this camera ha it really shines in that way. Any questions at all, all of us here at Leo's will be able to answer any of your questions. And thank you very much for your time.